Hola a todos, soy Javier Poveda y esto es de Bien TV, el canal en el que te lo vas a pasar mucho más allá. No, Elsa, el canal donde te lo vas a pasar de bien mientras aprendes geografía, historia, historia del arte y algo de economía y empresariales. Este vídeo va dirigido a mis alumnos de cuarto de la ESO de sección del CEIPSO en Encinar de Torrelodones. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at the first part of uh, the Unit 2, which is the bourgeois revolutions and the Spanish War of Independence. So, let's go to the presentation with some of our magic. Here we are. So, this is the first part of this Unit 2, which is, or which is called the American and French Revolutions. So these revolutions, these two revolutions are bourgeois revolutions. These bourgeois revolutions enabled the bourgeoisie, remember the wealthy uh, social class which were part of the third state, to gain political power and a social status which, are, which had only been available to the nobility under the ancien regime. These revolutions took place in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The ones we are going to talk about uh, took place <coughs> In the late 18th. We are going to talk about two revolutions, the American Revolution, which, uh, which consequence was the independence of the United States, and the French Revolution that put an end to the Ancien Regime in France. So let's start with the American Revolution from 1775 to 1783. This American Revolution, also called the American War of Independence, In this one, Great Britain fought against its 13 colonies in the Atlantic coast of North America. These 13 ones, which were, which became the first 13 states of the United States. What were the causes of the war? First, yeah, ideological factors, because the colonies were familiar with the Enlightenment ideas. They have read the uh, Enlightenment authors and they... Um, <clears throat> they were familiar with these ideas of equality and liberty. Then political factors, because the British Parliament made decisions about taxes, they raised taxes related to the colonies. The colonists had to pay taxes, but they didn't have any kind of representation in the British Parliament. So one of their mottos, one of their uh, slogans were no taxation without representation. And finally, economic and social factors, because um, by this time, the, the bourgeoisie of the colonies was a very wealthy social class and they wanted to trade with everyone. They wanted the freedom of trade and this was not allowed by the British king. So what were the causes? The king, George III, increased taxes on products such as tea, sugar, lead in order to pay his war debts from the Seven Years' War. That happened 15 years before. The colonists refused to pay these taxes and they protested. One of the most famous uh, episodes of protest was the Boston Tea Party in 1773, in which a group of colonists dressed up as Indians threw a cargo of tea into the sea in the Boston Harbor. Here you have them. They're throwing away this tea cargo to the ocean. Why? Because the king had raised a tax that, uh, on tea and the colonists refused to pay. This was the, the, the origin of the origin of the war. So the war began, began two years later when the colonists decided to fight for their independence and they created their own army, the Continental Army. This army was led by George Washington, this guy over here. On the 4th of July of 1776, the Continental Congress, the assembly that gathered all the representatives of all the 13 colonies, proclaimed the Declaration of Independence, the independence of the United States. After several years of war, the, um, Great Britain recognized the American independence. Why? Because they were defeated on the final Battle of Yorktown in 1781, and they recognized this independence in the Treaty of Versailles, in 1783. After that, in 1787, they wrote their constitution, the United States Constitution, which established a federal republic based on the Enlightenment principles of equality and liberty. First, popular sovereignty. Remember Rousseau. 
then separation of powers, Montesquieu, the president, the executive power, the congress, the legislative power, and the supreme court, the judicial power. And they recognize some citizen rights. Here you have a painting of the war, Washington, um, going over the Delaware River during the war. Here you have the Declaration of Independence on 4th July. This is the text, the original text of the Declaration of Independence. Remember, July the 4th, 1776. The, the, in the, the Declaration of Independence of the 13 United States of America, the first 13 colonies. Here is the surrender of Lord Cornwallis, which was the British commander at the Battle of Yorktown. And this is the first page, the original first, first page of the Constitution of the United States in 1787, with the famous uh, sentence, we the people of the United States, blah, 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 blah. This constitution is, um, is also it's, uh, still used today. And this is um, uh, a scene from the, the movie The Patriot, directed by Mel Gibson, which I recommend you to watch. No, 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 no. Okay, and that is all for the American Revolution. Let's go with the French Revolution, starting on 1789 and ending on 1804. So the French Revolution was a period of violent political and social change, which saw the abolition of the absolute monarchy, remember the political system of the Ancien Regime, and the end of the state's system, the social part of the Ancien Regime. This French Revolution started in 1789 and it's considered to be the first European bourgeois revolution. Here you have all the phases of the French Revolution, which we, uh, we will go on now. And these are the most important events that happened during it. So let's start with the beginning, the causes. First, which were the causes of the French Revolution? The influence of the Enlightenment, enlightenment because the bourgeoisie supported these ideas, the equality and liberty ideas. Then the economic crisis. The French monarchy was heavily in debt because of the court's expensive expending on luxuries and also because of the France participation in military conflicts, for example, the American War of Independence. The 13 colonies had the support of the French king. <clears throat> also, poor harvest after the year 1770 led to an increase of the price of grain. As, and as you know, the grain is used to make bread. Here you have some, um, some people from the, third, uh, from the third state gathering grain to make flour. Then the social crisis, because the economic crisis affected the third state. Why? Because they were the only ones who paid taxes. And then the political crisis, because to solve this problem, Louis XVI ministers suggested, Louis XVI was the, uh, the French king and that in, on that time, on the late 18th century, they suggested to, that the privileged states, the first and the second, nobility and clergy, should pay tax. They, of course, refused and demanded that the king call the States General. Remember, that is the Parliament of France. And why did they do that? Because the Parliament was the only one allowed to pass new taxes or to raise new taxes. So, Louis XVI, he was an absolute monarch and he opposed the meeting of the States General. But he had the opposition of the first and the second state, so he finally was forced to call them, and he did that in 1789. This is Louis XVI, very handsome, as you can see. And this is the opening season of the States General on, on, on five, the 5th of May of 1789. Okay, here you have the king, Louis XVI, and the third states gathered. What was the problem? That in the States General, the voting model was the medieval model. They voted by states. We have three states, the first, the second, and the third. So if the first state and the second state, they agreed, they always had the majority. So they had no problem with that. Despite the representatives of the third state were more than the ones of the first and the second state. 
you, you can see it here they had the first state had 300 representatives the second one had also 300 representatives but the third state had more than 600 what did the third state proposed they wanted to vote by population by head so if it, if this was done if each delegate would receive one vote they would have the majority so we are now on the first part of the french revolution which is this one here we are on june 1789 so louis 16 called this meeting of the general states in 1789 in order to increase taxes in order to, to pass new taxes and this was the beginning of the french revolution the third state as we said asked for a new voting system in which each representative would vote individually the king of Fork, of course refused so the third state declared that as the true representative of the nation he they called themselves the national assembly okay this is when they assumed the national the popular sovereignty okay this is rousseau's ideas what did the king do they locked this national assembly they locked he, well, he locked the representatives of the third state out of the states general so they met at a tennis court which was nearby and they declared that they would not leave the tennis court until france had a constitution they were inspired by the americans and this is called the tennis court oath and this is a famous uh, drawing from Jacques David, which is God, about the Le Serment du Jeu de Pomme, the tennis court oath. They swear that they won't leave this, um, <coughs> they won't leave this uh, this room until they wrote a constitution for France. And as a curious data you have uh, well this is the origin this uh, national assembly is the origin of the left and right um, positions in politics because the most radical ones sat to the left of the president of the assembly while the more uh, the moderate ones sat to the right of the president that's why one today we know the political well or we recognize the political parties as left wing or right wing so after that the king agreed to the third state demands and a new constituent assembly was formed why did he agree because this uh, the national assembly had the support of the people of paris so this national assembly became a constituent assembly a constituent assembly is an assembly which purpose is to write a new constitution that is why it's a constituent assembly and this was a triumph for the bourgeoisie because the monarchy was no longer absolute okay the, the king wouldn't have any more unlimited power and this happened at, uh, in the summer of 1789 but the king sent troops to versailles the palace of versailles in which the national well now the constituent assembly were, was gathered and this led to a riot on Paris, in Paris, on the 14th of July of 1789, in which people attacked the Bastille, which was a, which was a, a castle, a fortress, in where political prisoners were kept. They actually stormed the Bastille and the prisoners were freed. The 14th of July is now, then is today, the National Day of the French Republic. So this popular revolt spread from Paris to other cities and also to the countryside where peasants attacked the homes of the nobility and born, burned their archives and refused to pay feudal duties. This is called Le Grand Peur, The Great Fear, El Gran Miedo. So in response to, to these events, the Constituent Assembly pa uh, passed a, a range of legal reforms which they hoped would satisfy these demands of the peasantry and the urban masses okay because they were out of control they abolished feudal privilege and the tithes remember tithe is the ethmo paid by the peasantry to the clergy and also established equality in the payment of taxes so now the three states all the people also the nobles and the clergy will pay taxes they also wrote the declaration of rights of man and citizen which Let's see now some pictures. This is the storming of the Bastille on 14th July 1789. 
and this is the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizens and you have here a selection of articles, okay? You can read them. So, after that, in order to solve the French state state's financial problems, remember, the, the debts of the crown and the price of the grain, the Constituent Assembly confiscated and sold church property. All of these measures led to the discontent among who, of course, the clergy and the noble, the noblemen, which more, um, well, um, most of them emigrated to other European countries. And these people are called counter-revolutionaries because they were opposing the revolution. Louis XVI asked Austria to, for support against the revolution. The Austrian Empire was, was one of the most powerful states in this moment. He also tried to escape from France, but this ended in failure. They were caught uh, near the border of the Dutch, uh, of the um, yes, near the Dutch border. Okay, his actions caused an increase in popular opposition to the monarchy. So the people, mostly the third state, the common people, um, um, they supported less this monarchy. They supported less the king. Okay. So finally, in 1791, the Assembly approved the first French constitution, the Constitution of 1791, which established a constitutional monarchy in which the powers of the monarch were limited by this constitution, so the monarch was no longer an absolute monarchy, he was a constitutional king, limited male suffrage, only men with a certain amount of property could vote, only the rich could vote, and the separation of powers. The king would have the executive power, the assembly, the, the legislative power, and the courts, the judicial power. This is Louis XVI and his family. They were dressed as bourgeois and they were arrested in Varennes, which is a city near to the border. Okay, And they were brought back to Paris. And here you have the first page of the constitution and the acceptance of the constitution by Louis XVI. He was forced to do that. So now we go or we start the second phase, which is the Legislative Assembly. Since the, the Constituent Assembly uh, had already wrote or written the Constitution, they dissolved and they, um, there were new elections to elect a, an, a legislative, oh my god, I can't find the words, a Legislative Assembly, una Asamblea Legislativa. So in this legislative assembly, they were, there, were, there were two political groups, the Girondins and the Jacobins, los Girondinos y los Jacobinos. So the Girondins, they were the representatives of the wealthy bourgeoisie and they had moderate views. But the Jacobins, they were the representatives of the petite bourgeoisie, the small bourgeoisie, and they were way more radical, okay? They wanted to abolish the, mon the monarchy and to establish a republic. During this time, France was under the constant threat of invasion by Austria and Prussia, okay? The, the two of the main states of Central Europe, and in response, France declared war on them and they tried to invade them, okay? In 1792, this is the first coalition war. The French army was defeated at the hands of these armies and Louis XVI reluctance to accept the, rev the revolutionary changes, okay, he was uh, trying to boycott this uh, new constitution, this caused unrest among the population. So, in August 1792, the people of Paris revolted again and attacked the Tuileries pal Palace, okay, this was the, um, the palace in which um, the assembly was uh, uh, was gathered, okay, and uh, as a result of this event, and where Louis XVI lived, okay, so uh, as a result of this event, Louis XVI was imprisoned, and the monarchy was abolished, and France became a republic. So the first French Republic was established after this assault on the Tuileries Palace, el Palacio de las Tullerías. This is the capture of the palace on August 17. 92 by the National Guard, and this is the proclamation of the abolition of the monarchy, the 21st of September of 1792. With, and also this is the slogan, the motto of this first French Republic, which we all know, Liberté, Égalité, 
fraternité, which is liberty, equality and fraternity, which is also the motto of the slogan of the French Republic nowadays. This is the coat of arms of the French, the fifth King, French Republic. And also as, um, well, this is a curious um, thing that the, that the first Republicans made, they changed the calendar and made this French Republican calendar. They, ch they changed the name of all the months. Vendimiere, Plumer, Firmer, Nibos, Pluvios, Ventos. My French pronunciation is invented, as you know. So now, with the Republic, we start the third phase, which is the Convention, the most funny one. Starting on 1792, ending on 1795. This was the most radical phase of the revolution because a new assembly called the Convention, La Convención, was elected with universal manhood suffrage. All the males could vote. In the, well, the next year, in 1793, the Convention agreed to execute Louis XVI for treason and he was beheaded by the guillotin, which is a blade that falls on your neck. The Jacobins took control of the government, they lead the convention, the convention and impose a dictatorship known as the Terror. These Jacobins were led by Maximilien Ro Robespierre, he's a god, and supported by the saint culotte We will explain who they are. These measures that were introduced during the Terror were intended to contribute to the war that France was now fighting against these European enemies after the beheading of the beheading of uh, Louis XVI, many countries declared war on France. For example, already Austria and Prussia, but also Great Britain and Spain. And they also aimed to end internal revolts led by the counter-revolutionaries. So what did they do? They raised a popular revolutionary army that was formed to fight the war against these countries. There was there was widespread repression on the on the counter-revolutionaries. This means that anyone suspected of opposing the revolution could be executed. The terror executed um, around 4,200 no, 42,000 um, people during these three years. And finally, they wrote a new constitution, the Constitution of 1793, which established universal manhood suffrage, and it was the Constitution of the Republic. Here you have the death of the citizen Louis Capet, that's how they call the, the king, on the Place de la Revolution, which is the um, Place de la Concorde today in Paris. Okay, This is the head of Louis XVI. This is a scene, well, this is the scene of the beheading of Louis XVI from a French movie, which I recommend you to watch. No! Ah! Okay, this is Maximilien Robespierre, the leader of the Jacobins and the ruler of the convention during the terror. Okay, and this is the explanation of the saint culottes The saint culottes were the revolutionaries and they call them like that because saint culottes were it means without culottes. The culottes is this kind of trouser, this short trouser that was uh, fashionable for the nobleman and also the king. Okay. But the, um, the poor people, they were trousers, so they were sans culotte, without culottes. And this is the political map of Europe in this year 1792. The French Republic, this new proclaimed French Republic, was in war with Great Britain, Spain, Prussia and Austria, and also more of these smaller countries. Okay. All Europe was uh, was fighting the revolution. So the last part of this French Revolution, the last phase, is the Directory and the Consulate. El Directorio y el Consulado. The Directory from 1795 to 1799 and the Consulate from 1799 to 1804. So uh, after this, uh, the terror of the Jacobins, there were some revolts within the convention and the moderate deputies overthrew the Jacobins in the year 1794 and they adopted a new constitution the following year. This constitution reestablished limited male suffrage and also introduced a new form of government, the directory, el directorio. 
the executive, in which the executive power was held by five members or five directors. Okay? At this time, France was starting to win battles against these four countries that we have talked uh, about before, so the power and the influence of the army increased. And um, uh, some uh, of these uh, generals of the army, they were gaining a lot of population. Which, which one the most important, which was the most important from all of them? Napoleon Bonaparte. In 1799, Bonaparte organized a military coup, which is, a military coup is a uh, golpe de estado, a coup d'état, which was called the coup of 18 Brumaire. Brumaire is a month of the French uh, Republican calendar. And after this coup, Napoleon took over the country and he established a new form of government, which was called the consulate, el consulado. The executive power was held by three consuls, in, uh, including Napoleon himself as first consul. In 1802, Napoleon was named first consul for life, okay, because the consuls were supposed to be elected, blah, 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 blah. No. Napoleon, first consul for life until he dies. And this allowed him to introduce reforms to end France's political and economic instability. Napoleon was very popular because his government, uh, he solved a lot of the issues, of the economic issues of the country, and he also won the war. Okay? The first and the second coalition wars were, made, were won by France. By the year 1804, Napoleon had absolute power and the French Revolution had ended. Why? Because he named himself Emperor of the French. But we will study that in the next video. This is a picture of the Convention Rises against Robespierre on the 27th July of 1794. Now here Robespierre is being arrested and he was beheaded, beheaded later on the guillotine. Here is the execution of Robespierre and his supporters on July 1794. Remember again the guillotine and the execution by beheading. Robespierre is in this one here, number 10. And this is the coup of uh, 18 Brumaire. This is Napoleon being opposed by the assembly. And this is Napoleon depicted as first consul around 1801. Napoleon is God, you know. And this is the end of this unit with the coronation of Napoleon by Jacques-Louis David, the best painter of history. Actually, this is Napoleon um, um, putting the crown on his wife, Josephine. And this is all for this video. Uh, magic. Ok. Así que este ha sido el primer vídeo sobre la unidad 2. Espero que os haya gustado y que os hayáis enterado de algo. Ha tenido que ser un poquito rápido porque ya llevamos 28 minutazos de vídeo y luego esto no lo veis. Así que me despido ya. Y recordad siempre, sic semper tiranis. Así siempre con los tiranos. Es una frase apócrifa atribuida a Marco Junio Bruto que se dice que dijo cuando se apuñaló a Julio César en los idus de marzo del año 44 a.C. Así siempre con los tiranos. Y es un eslogan que fue adoptado por los revolucionarios americanos y que de hecho aparece en los escudos de muchos estados. Es una frase muy apropiada para esto que hemos visto en el día de hoy. Muchas gracias por ver el vídeo. Recordad seguirme en Instagram y suscribirse así como, mira, así, como hacen los youtubers. Suscribirse y darle like al canal y todo eso. Y nos vemos en el próximo. Muchas gracias.